Okay, in today's video, we're going to be talking about the magnetic field from a current carrying wire. And the magnetic field is a vector quantity, so therefore we have to describe it by both a magnitude and a direction. In the first part of this video, we're going to talk about how we determine the direction of the magnetic field from a current carrying wire. Okay, now I'm going to show you how we can see the magnetic field that is produced by the current that is flowing through a wire. Currently, we have a wire. Currently, there is no current flowing through the wire, and each of those magnetic compass needles have now aligned themselves with the Earth's magnetic field. But as soon as I close the switch, you will see that current starts to flow, and the current that is flowing through that wire produces a magnetic field, and the compass needles immediately react to that magnetic field, and they line themselves up with the magnetic field that is produced by the current that is flowing through the wire. And you can see some better, some not so good. They're basically lining themselves up so they're perpendicular. This one shows it nicely, perpendicular to the wire, because that is how the magnetic field is when it is produced by a current carrying wire. At that point, it is basically magnetic, magnetic, it is basically perpendicular to the wire. So you can say, open the switch, no current, and the needles go back to the Earth's magnetic field. I close the switch, and immediately the needles react to the magnetic field that is produced by the current in that wire. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to determine the direction of the magnetic field from a current carrying wire. Now this is my wire, and this arrow obviously shows us the direction that the current is flowing. And in order to determine the direction of the magnetic field, I'm going to use right hand rule number one. This is my right hand, and right hand rule number one says that you take your thumb and you point it in the direction of the current, you take your fingers, you wrap them around the wire, and the direction that your fingers are pointing is the direction that the magnetic field is flowing. And in this case, I would look on from the top, and you can see that the magnetic field moves in concentric circles around that wire in the counterclockwise direction. That's right hand rule number one, thumb in the direction of the current, fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. Now we know that really it is not the positive charges that are flowing, but current, when the word is used current in your textbook, what they're talking about is the flow of positive charge. Now we know that really it's the electrons that are moving through the wire. And if the positive charges flow in one direction, then the electrons must be flowing in the other direction. So I use my right hand rule for the current. And you can see I get that the current is pointing up and the magnetic field is counterclockwise. But I should be able to get the same answer using the flow of the electrons. And in order to do that with the electrons, of course, I don't use my right hand, I use the opposite hand, which is my left hand. But I do the same thing. I take my thumb, I point it in the direction that the electrons are flowing, I wrap my fingers around like that, and I get that once again, the magnetic field is moving counterclockwise. So it doesn't really matter whether I use my left hand rule for the electrons or my right hand rule for the flow of the positive charge, which is how we define current, I get the same answer. My thumbs are obviously pointing in opposite directions, but my fingers are pointing in the same direction around that wire, which is counterclockwise. So just remember that right hand rule current, left hand rule flow of electrons. Okay, now once again, here we have our current carrying wire, and the current is flowing in this direction. And if we want to think about which way the magnetic field would be moving it for this current carrying wire, we would point our thumb on my right hand, using right hand rule number one, point our thumb in, up, and we would reach our hand kind of into the screen and wrap it around that wire, and you would see that the magnetic field would be flowing in concentric circles, around that wire in the counterclockwise direction. And really there's a magnetic field all the way along the length of that wire, and the magnetic field is moving in concentric circles in that direction. Okay, now it's a little bit hard to show this on a two-dimensional piece of paper. So when we have a two-dimensional piece of paper, here's our wire obviously for our, on our two-dimensional piece of paper. How do we represent that? Well, if we think about it, on the left-hand side of that wire, the current excuse me, the magnetic field is moving out of the page. Now the magnetic field is a vector, which we think of as an arrow, which we show as an arrow. And if the magnetic field is a vector and it's moving out of the page, then we would see the points of the vector, the points of those arrows coming toward us on this side of this current carrying wire. And we can represent that by drawing on a two-dimensional piece of paper, usually these little circles, and we put a point 
or a dot in, in the side of the circle, and that represents the magnetic field that is coming out of the page on the left-hand side of that wire. Well, on the right-hand side of that wire, the magnetic field is moving into the page, and we have an arrow, which is our vector, and if it's moving away from us into the page, then we see the feathers on the back of that arrow, and therefore we represent a magnetic field, or really any field, magnetic, electric, gravitational, and that's moving into the page with, the, with those circles usually, and then a cross like that, or an X like that, that shows the magnetic field is moving into the page, and that's supposed to represent the back of the arrow, the points are supposed to represent the tip of the arrow as they come out of the page, and the X is the back of the arrow as that vector moves into the page. And basically, you can think of it as kind of a slice through that three-dimensional magnetic field, and we represent that on a two-dimensional piece of paper like that. And we can do the same thing if the current is flowing in the opposite direction. Now on the left-hand side, the magnetic field is moving into the page, and we have our X's on the left-hand side. The magnetic field is moving out of the page on the right-hand side, and you can see the tips of the arrows, those vectors representing the magnetic field as it moves out of the page. Okay, So that's how we represent the magnetic field on a two-dimensional piece of paper from uh, a wire with a current flowing through it. Now, let's talk about the factors that actually affect the magnetic field strength from that current carrying wire. Now, what is it that affects the magnetic field strength? Well, one of them should be pretty straightforward is the current, okay? Magnetic field, we give the symbol B. Current, we give the symbol I. Now, the other thing is the distance that we are away from the uh, current carrying wire. Well, the distance is measured from the wire out. Now, we have these concentric circles, and the distance out from the wire to each circle or to each magnetic field line or from a distance away from that wire is really the radius. So we call that the radius. We don't call it the distance, we call it the radius and we give it the symbol R. Now, you should kind of have an idea also that as you increase the current that the magnetic field is going to increase or the magnetic field strength is going to increase. So we say that the current and the magnetic field strength are directly proportional. Okay, or that the magnetic field is directly proportional to the current. Okay, they have a direct relationship. Now, the radius, as you get farther away, you should have some idea also that as you get farther away from things, it usually gets weaker. So, therefore, we know that the magnetic field is inversely proportional to the distance away. So, in one case, it's directly proportional to the current. In the other case, the magnetic field strength is inversely proportional to the distance away from the wire. Now, this is the equation that we actually use to calculate the magnetic field strength. And I'm going to go through the whole thing, each of uh, these things one at a time. First of all, we have B. B is the symbol we give for the magnetic field. And B, the magnetic field, is measured in Teslas, which we have the abbreviation T. Okay, now, mu zero. This is mu zero. It's a constant. It has the value 4 times pi, or 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7, and the units for the constant are tesla meter ampere, or tesla meter per ampere. Sometimes you'll see different units here, that's okay, but the value is always 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. Okay, I is the current, all right, and the current is measured in amperes, and then we have 2 times pi times r, r being the distance away from the wire, and that has to be measured in uh, meters. So the radius, which has a symbol R, is measured in meters. A lot of times on a problem, the distance will be given in centimeters, and you have to convert it to meters first. All right, so that's the equation. And of course, now let's do a simple problem using that equation. We have that the magnetic field strength is once again equal to mu zero times I divided by 2 pi R. In this case, the current will say is half an ampere, 0 0.5 amperes. The radius is 10 centimeters, and here is our constant 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. So simply, we're just going to plug the values in. Now, I this is mu 0 times I, so I can move this to the top. So I wrote mu 0, 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 on the top, times 0 0.5 amperes, divided by 2 times pi times 0 0.10 meters. Remember, you got to take 10 centimeters, convert it into meters, and when you do that, and you do the math, you get that the magnetic field strength uh, 10 centimeters away from a wire that has a current of 0 0.5 amperes is 1 times 10 to the minus 7 Teslas. Okay, 
So there you go. I hope you found that video helpful. There's a lot of information in that video. Uh, please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Let's see. Leave me a thumbs up for this video. Give me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them how much you care. Thank you. We'll see you in the next video.